For many years, the fascinating mountain people of the Himalayas lived hidden away within remote valleys, far from the hubbub of modern life. Their unique culture and age-old traditions lay undiscovered for several centuries, so appear somewhat mysterious and strange, even today. Nanook is the leader of a dog team that, along with a group of four men, will travel through the remarkable, though demanding terrain that is the Himalayas. At the beginning of the journey in northern Austria, there's a final equipment check. Then the expedition's eight husky dogs also become official passengers. The dogs must wait patiently in these special crates for several hours until we reach our destination. A strenuous journey lies ahead. Five hard weeks across the Himalayas, some stretches of which have never been traversed by man, or even a husky. The first leg of the journey is to Germany. In the cargo area of Frankfurt Airport, there is a special reunion with the sleigh dogs, whose well-being must be strictly controlled. Around nine hours of flying time is extremely tiring for the animals. But our huskies are hardy creatures, well used to flying. However, the animals are carefully handled into the aircraft as any injury now could endanger the entire project. In the cockpit, everything is going according to plan. Horst Maas, Eric Carraras, Eric Proel, and Volker Raas use the flight to relax following the long anti-climax and detailed planning of recent weeks. The journey east travels up to 10,000 meters towards the rising sun a fantastic and truly captivating sight as we duly approach New Delhi Airport on time. But on the Indian subcontinent, time seems to be of little consequence. Here, the Westerner soon discovers that his normal sense of order has been replaced by the vibrant and chaotic streets of Delhi. In the Austrian city of Linz, the temperature was around minus two degrees Celsius. But here in New Delhi, it's 30 degrees and rising. A difference in temperature that not only makes the team perspire, but also disorientates the dogs who are more accustomed to a colder climate. Finally, the expedition flies into the most northerly region of India and above the mighty and majestic peaks of the Himalayas. After a total journey of more than 8,000 kilometers, Huskies can once again enjoy their natural environment. The first sledge is pulled by five dogs, the second by three. Each team is perfectly matched and harmonized. Each dog has his own position and special function. The first leg of the potentially hazardous expedition travels more than 3,500 meters above sea level. 
to the high plains of Zanskar, the regions of both Jammu and Kashmir. The frozen ice cap of the Zanskar River is a great challenge for the dogs, but the team travels at a good pace. So far, the journey to Ladakh, a land of high passes, has gone smoothly. Both equipment and dogs have passed their first practical test with flying colors. But after 15 kilometers, the first difficulties arise. The speed of travel slows down as the ice of the Zanskar River begins to thin. The dogs scent danger, and seconds later it's plain to see that the ice has turned to water. It seems that the journey is already at an end. The local people cast a wary eye on the expedition. They're somewhat surprised that the strange men and their unusual dogs are making camp on a small island of ice in the middle of the river. However, the children appear to be less reserved. After a short while, an improvised ferry service has been organized in order that the curious inhabitants of a nearby village can make their way to the frozen island. A number of the local people that are carrying wood for their homes greet the intrepid travelers with a warm smile. Here, wood is a rare but vital commodity. In these elevated regions, the scenery has little vegetation so firewood must be carried from the valleys below. The children have brought their skates with them and are keen to show off their skills. The skates are fitted with smooth runners that are strapped to their shoes. They're quite basic, but are nonetheless highly effective. The dogs react well to the playfulness of the children, while others tend to their paws and coat. A long and arduous journey lies ahead, so this is a good opportunity to relax and enjoy the day. More and more people come to visit throughout the day. Most haven't come to stare at the four team members, but to take a closer look at the strange-looking canine members of the team. The women are particularly fascinated by the Huskies. Skis are also something new to the people of this remote area. Despite their lack of skill, they still give it a try, with various degrees of success. In the afternoon, the team is forced to move on. The small island has become far too dangerous. The river could flood the island overnight with disastrous consequences.
The original plan to reach the high plains of Ladakh on the frozen Zanskar River has failed. The camp is soon cleared. The final items of equipment are brought to the safety of the riverbank. In their newly set up camp, the men urgently try to plot an alternative route. After studying various maps, the problem is solved. A truck will transport the entire expedition through the Kru River Valley to the small town of Kagil. From there, a further attempt will be made by sledge. The team members are a little anxious. All the months of planning have now been frustrated by the sudden melting of the Zanskar River. And although an alternative has been agreed, there is far from any guarantee that it will succeed. However, the next day starts with a pleasant surprise. Overnight, the town has been transformed because today is the 26th of January, a national holiday in India. In 1950, the Republic of India was officially declared, three years after it had been granted its independence by Great Britain. The close relationship between the local population and their culture is particularly reflected in the traditional headgear and clothing of this region. Everyone in the town has been looking forward to this special day. The local people proudly wear their traditional dance costumes. Although these festivities were introduced relatively recently and are not of a religious nature, the actual dances have a long tradition. The dance rituals are colourful and impressive. The centuries-old cultures of the Himalayan people will fascinate one and all. Now, it's time to attend to the sledges. The brakes have been damaged by the ice, so must be repaired. As the town is mainly Islam, the Khomeini looks down on the simple yet effective techniques that are employed to repair the sledge. The work is observed by the team members as well as some local people who've gathered outside the workshop. Most of the people here have never seen a sledge before. Our expedition has certainly created a lot of interest in the local population. In addition to the sledges, the huskies once again seem to be the stars of the show. They're so different to the local dogs that some of the local people treat them with great suspicion. But not everyone is wary. The children like their exotic appearance.
Eventually, night falls in the valley. The tea not only warms the body, but also the soul. The team has been invited by a local family to stay in their home. But inside the house, the temperature is anything but hospitable. Minus 15 degrees Celsius is quite common at this time of year. The team members study their maps once again, while Nanook, a leader of the dogs, has decided to go to sleep. An early start the next day, and this time the expedition leaves with a surprisingly large following. In the winter months, most of the Sherpas in this region have no work, so they're grateful for expeditions such as this. The journey now travels from Kargil in the river valley of Suru. The dogs are already displaying their natural physical advantages over man. But they're not moving at full speed, as the porters would be unable to keep up with them. The Suru Valley stretches along the northwestern section of Ladakh and is part of the Tibetan highlands. The route leads through the valley for 75 kilometers in a southwesterly direction. En route, the teams take a short break in Pandor. For many centuries, this small village has been a center of weaving. The demanding life of the people in this region shows itself in the furrowed faces of the elderly. The breeding of animals is also important in the lives of these people, especially hybrid cattle and yak. The following day, the journey through the Sudo Valley continues with renewed gusto. The huskies pull the sledges with great enthusiasm, with the musher, the driver of the harnessed dogs behind them. And the deep snow doesn't seem to trouble them at all. Even more than 4,000 years ago, sleigh dogs were used as a means of transport. They originated in Siberia. It was a nomadic people who were the first to have taken advantage of the unique running abilities of the dogs on their extensive hunting trips. By crossing the Bering Strait, the dogs even arrived in North America. As night falls, the camp is quickly set up and the fire lit. A hot meal compensates for the endeavors of the day. It goes without saying that the dogs have also earned a well-deserved meal. This region's proximity to Tibet is indicated by the various Buddhist monasteries that are to be found here. For those who are new to the region, the monasteries of Ladakh exude a mysterious and almost eerie ambiance.
Within each monastery, the protective Gong Kang Temple is of great importance. It is within this temple that the angry-looking images of numerous protective deities are kept, gods that protect the monastery from evil. Although the monks are poor, the interior of the buildings often radiate an amazing wealth of magnificent decoration. The jurisdiction of the monasteries extends far beyond their walls. The nearby fields also belong to the monasteries. The farmers pay rent to the monks. But the monasteries are far more than a place of prayer. They're the foundation of Himalayan social and cultural life. Even today, it is still common in Ladakh for at least one son of a family to enter monastic life. This is usually at the age of seven. After around two years, the pupils become novice monks. Shortly after daybreak, the expedition sets off. One of the most difficult sections of the journey is approaching. Some of the supplies that had been carried by the sledges now have to be transported by the Sherpas, who are surprisingly ill-equipped for the weather. Heavy snowfall and avalanches also hinder the journey. The expedition begins to slow down once again. The risks are now becoming too much for the Sherpas. An interpreter informs the expedition team that they are unwilling to continue the journey as the snow is too deep and it looks as though even more is on its way. We don't want to go ahead, we want to go back. It's a good journey and a happy journey, but you may be careful about the market wrong. The team decides to split into two groups. Erich Proel, Volker Raas and the Sherpas return to Kargil with much of the equipment. Mas and Eric Corrales, the journey continues towards Zanskar, but their food is in short supply. In Kargil, the Islamic center of Ladakh, time is taken to pay a short visit to the Himalaya hair cutting salon that is owned by Ishmael and his sons. Okay. 
as it is minus 30 degrees Celsius, it's only possible to start the vehicle's diesel engine with the warmth of a small fire. Vital transport that will take Eric Proel and Volker Ross from Kargil to Leh, the capital of Ledakh. Due to its military importance, the 440-kilometer Srinagar Leh Highway is one of the best roads in the region. The mountain world of Ladakh is situated in Kashmir, a crisis-ridden province that since the middle of the 20th century has seen many wars. The road is not without its dangers as it travels to a dizzy height. Even though the mountain road demands a high level of concentration, the driver travels at breakneck speed. One simple mistake could easily bring the team an early demise. Around 20 kilometers outside Leh, a monastery appears that seems to grow out of the very mountain. Tixi is one of the most beautiful and most impressive examples of Ladakh architecture. The 12-story monastery has for many years been one of the region's most famous landmarks. A number of monks and novices are preparing for a religious celebration. Monastery festivals are often celebrated in the winter months, a tranquil time that is unlike the busy summer months when many tourists travel here. The monks of Tixi, who go about their work in a tranquil state of mind and enjoy a traditional meal, are a fascinating sight for those who travel to these remote parts. The Tixi Monastery is part of the Gelupka order to which the Dalai Lama belongs. Unlike Tibet, that is occupied by the People's Republic of China, Tibetan Buddhism is still undertaken here in its original form. A particularly impressive ritual of Tibetan Buddhism is the daily morning prayers of the monks in the Tixi Monastery. Leh, a town with a population of 20,000 that is located in the Indu Valley, is the center of Ladakh's tourist industry. In the winter months, it is peaceful and relaxed, except when there's time for a game of polo. Unlike most other countries in the world, Polo in northern India is not reserved for an elite upper class, but is instead a national sport. Indeed, each large village has its own polo field. This spectacular and challenging sport could be traced back to Central Asia. British colonial officers introduced it to Europe in the 19th century. <laughs> 
our host mass, Eric Carreras and their dogs have advanced deeper into the remote, snow-covered Suru Valley. Their strenuous route leads past a magnificent world of peaks and glaciers. But their destination of the Zanskar Highlands is still some distance away. Amid the solitude of the mountains, a small settlement suddenly appears. A local family invites the adventurers to enjoy a warm fire. The fantastic mountain world of the Himalayas is visible from within the building. Horst Maas desperately seeks additional help for the hazardous expedition with some of the villagers, but without success. Next morning, the children of the village have gathered in front of the house to admire the huskies. Eventually, more villagers come to join them. During the long winter months, visitors here are few and far between. Almost the entire valley is cut off from the outside world. The two-man team and its eight huskies set off again on their strenuous journey through the Suru Valley. gives little hint of the extreme weather conditions of the Suru Valley. Its streets are full of life, and the rural character of the capital of Ladakh is plain to see. Today's attraction is, once again, the strange foreigners and their camera. Animals are a normal sight in the center of Leh. This ancient trading town, at the junction of various former caravan routes, has always been a meeting point for a large variety of peoples. Almost everywhere in the street, there are women selling food and various household goods. In this part of India, time has most certainly stood still. Even in their everyday life, several of the local inhabitants still wear traditional clothing, just like their ancestors more than 100 years ago. Their working methods and the butcher's quarters have also remained unaltered. Here, at an altitude of 3,500 meters above sea level, everything continues as in days of old. Ladakh was once a Buddhist kingdom. That is why this region is still often called Little Tibet. Both in the town of Leh and in its surroundings, there are several monasteries and sanctuaries that are well worth a visit. Eric Proel and Volker Ras resume their journey in order to rendezvous with the other team on time. Both men have spent the last few days preparing for the 80-kilometer walk along the frozen Zanskar River.
Their first attempt, some three weeks past, is still prominent in their minds. This time nothing must go wrong, otherwise all the effort of the past several months will be in vain. The ice of the Zanskar River is still holding, but this could change with little or no warning. Another problem is that the supplies will only last for another few days. The beauty of nature can only be observed while on the move. The interaction of various shapes and colors is fascinating. Spectacular images from beneath the ice of the river reveal a fantastic world that provides yet another remarkable impression of the Zanskar Valley. It's already pitch dark as Eric Proel, Volker Raus and the Eight Huskies prepare for the night. Now, they're almost totally dependent on their technical equipment as the temperatures can easily fall below minus 30 degrees Celsius. The next day leads to an extraordinary encounter. The moment the men enter this building, they have a strange feeling. The interior is very dark, full of mystery and suspense. Suddenly, from behind a door, are the skulls of various animals a sight not for the tender-hearted. Even Erich Proel and Volker Raas are a little bemused at their unexpected discovery, but they're also fascinated by this strange place. An old woman lives in the house, a woman who is apparently blessed with a special gift. She can see into the future and is therefore recognized as an oracle. By singing, she transports herself into a trance-like state. The oracle is also a healer. Many of the people of this region trust more in traditional forms of medicine than in those of the West. Suddenly, the guests are privy to the oracle's skills. She turns to Eric Proel, who has been thinking of the other team. The oracle says that the dog sleds are close to Zanskar and that all are faring well. Horst Maas and Eric Carraras have indeed traveled closer to their destination even though the conditions are anything but ideal. The supplies for the dogs have almost run out.
Meanwhile, in the Zanskar Valley, progress with the other team has deteriorated. They can only move by crawling. The ice could break up at any second, and the freezing cold water would spell certain death for anyone unfortunate enough to fall in. Each year, around 20 people are accidentally killed here. They disappear. Only in spring, when the ice melts, are their bodies recovered. The Sherpas are now frightened and exhausted. <laughs> Fortunately, the next leg of the journey proves uneventful, so everyone can sit together in the evening and enjoy a refreshing cup of Tibetan butter tea. Located on the banks of the river, a cave provides shelter for the night and protection from the icy cold wind. The fire is still burning when the group sets off across the rocky terrain. In this region of Ladakh, wood is almost non-existent, although it is desperately needed in the villages. The people who live in the valley travel far to collect it. Despite the harsh living conditions here, the village still has an idyllic atmosphere. The inhabitants of the tiny settlement of Chiling specialize in arts and crafts and especially in the production of fine metalwork. The blacksmiths of the village cling to their age-old traditions. For centuries, the villagers resounded to the hammering sound of its blacksmiths. The blacksmiths are reliant upon a good supply of wood. In their old-fashioned workshops and by simple means, they produce tools and various other objects, including jewellery. Outside the smithy, sheep's wool is washed. Another important source of income for the people of the Ladakh region. All 17 members of this family work with the creations of the blacksmith. The village's products are offered for sale during the summer months in the local markets of both Zanskar and Ladakh. Various towns and villages experienced much economic and cultural prosperity from the many important caravan routes that once arrived here from Tibet, Central Asia and Kashmir. The trading of spices, tea, wool and metal consolidated the prosperity of the former royal rulers of Ladakh. Today, the main source of income is derived from the region's scenery and culture, plus the production of jewellery, each of which plays a vital role in the local tourist industry. The wool that is produced here is mainly for local use. It's plain to see that this work is not the sole domain of the women, but is also undertaken by the men. The kitchen and its hearth are located in the center of the building. With 
With the first rays of sunlight, a couple of members of the expedition attempt to mount a horse and also a mule. Their first efforts are not too successful. The team, led by Eric Proel and Volker Raz, have enough time for a short detour as their group has advanced more quickly than expected. The journey leads up a steep mountain. With its copper and silversmiths, the village of Chiling is quite unique in Ladakh. And the surrounding area also has its advantages. The destination of this short journey is the hot springs that are situated around 4,000 meters above sea level. It's here that the team can enjoy the first warm bath that they've had for three weeks. The temperature of the hot springs is around 30 degrees. Horst Maas and Eric Kuraras can only dream of such luxury as they're still en route with their dog sleds. In a race against time, they have mobilized the final ounces of energy from the Huskies and are heading towards their final destination. In the meantime, the other two members of the expedition have also set off again. But by foot, in spite of their visit to Chiling, they're feeling a little despondent. Unlike the Huskies, who now seem to scent the end of the journey. However, it is still unknown whether both teams will arrive at their destination. Their journeys have been long and complex. Both teams are noticeably nervous. But suddenly, all the tension of the past few weeks disappears. After several days of worry and uncertainty, both teams are reunited. Nanook and the other Huskies have helped the adventurers to achieve the almost impossible. With their earth-shaking sound, these 15-meter long horns, known as Dungchen, are not blown in honor of the expedition, but are an integral part of a traditional mask festival in Leh. Leh is well known for its colorful religious festivals, most of which are held in winter. The festival's traditional dances attract many thousands of visitors. The themes of each dance are quite similar. They feature the triumphant victory of Buddhism over the demon-like forces of the shamanistic faith of Burm. Monks from the surrounding monasteries rehearse their dances for several months. Some of the festivals can last up to eight days. The dancers don't seem to feel the cold. Here, another crowd has gathered. But it's not the masked dancers who are at the center of attention, but the Huskies. The ride through the streets of Leh 
develops into a triumphant march for the team led by Horst Maas. For the four men and eight huskies, the conclusion of the journey couldn't have been a greater success. Soon the local people returned to their festivities. Finally, the masked dancers form a long procession and transform the capital of Ladakh into an exciting world of both sound and colour. Even today, the people here have remained largely untouched by modern life. Thus, their colourful and enigmatic culture is still very much alive and well. A marvellous end to a successful expedition.